Our Dai people cherish water resources and forest very much. We have an old saying, only if we have forest, we could have water. Only if we have water, we can have paddy field. Only if we have paddy field, we can have rice. And only if we have rice, the Dai people can survive. Yunnan is the People's Republic of China's most biodiverse province. Like many of China's provinces, Yunnan has experienced rapid economic development in recent decades. That continues to bring millions out of poverty, but it's had a dramatic impact on the environment. Yunnan has lost much of its biodiversity as cash crop farming has replaced or fragmented land that was once forested. Meanwhile, air, soil and water quality has declined. Climate change is expected to bring further pressure. But perhaps nowhere exemplifies the importance of addressing Yunnan's environmental issues than Sichuan Bana, the southwestern prefecture of the province. It borders Myanmar and Laos, and it's close to both Thailand and Vietnam. It's also on the front line of Yunnan's increasing efforts to preserve its biodiversity. Yunnan confronts a fragile ecological environment, an insufficient environmental infrastructure, and weak environmental conservation capacity and there's a pronounced contradiction between development and conservation. And it's with these challenges in mind that the Asian Development Bank's Greater Mekong Subregion Core Environment Program is working with the Yunnan Environmental Protection Department in Sichuanbana. Firstly, Zhizhuanbana has the largest tropical rainforest and monsoon forest in China. It's the most complete, largest and biodiversity-rich tropical rainforest ecosystem. Designated as a biosphere reserve, it's also a biodiversity hotspot of international significance. Secondly, 13 indigenous ethnic groups including Dai, Hani and Bulan live in Zhizhuanbana and have created its unique and colorful ethnic culture, bordering Laos and Myanmar and being adjacent to Thailand and Vietnam. Zhizhuanbana has a long history of association with other GMS countries. All of these have formed the ecological and cultural distinctiveness of Zhizhuanbana. Before the early 80s, Zhizhuanbana ran a self-sufficient natural economy and utilized traditional farming methods. Most land was covered by tropical rainforests. Today, large-scale commercial rubber, tea, sugar, and banana plantations dominate much of the landscape. Rubber alone covers a quarter of the land in Sichuanbana. Trade in these products with other provinces and neighboring countries has brought new prosperity to rural areas, but the environmental impacts have been severe. Nearly two-thirds of the tropical rainforest has been cleared. Much of the region's unique biodiversity has been lost, replaced by monocultures that exacerbate soil erosion and drought, and the heavy use of fertilizers and insecticides pollutes the soil and waterways. To strengthen biodiversity conservation, 161 nature reserves of different types with a total area of 2.81 million hectares have been established in Yunnan and accounts for 7.14% of the total territory in the province. Nine of these nature reserves are in Sichuanbana, protecting its last major pockets of fully intact tropical forest. 
but fragmentation between these reserves and human encroachment on other forested areas threatens the survival of species and remains a continuing source of conflict. Recently, a lone elephant from the Shishuanbana Wild Elephant Valley went on the rampage in an area frequently used by elephants to cross from one section of the park to another. It highlighted the larger issue of species migrating between national parks and the need for forest connectivity. As a response in 2009, the Core Environment Programme, or CEP, introduced the concept of biodiversity corridors to reconnect strategic forest areas between the nature reserves. The main function of the corridors is to meet the basic needs of wildlife when they live or move among different habitats. So a corridor should have food, water and concealment places for wild animals. These are the main factors for their survival. Four corridors have been developed. Community activities like village development funds, reforestation, developing eco-farming practices and environmental education were mainly conducted in the Mango Nabane and Mengla Shangyong corridors. They're initiatives that help to ensure sustainable livelihoods which have a minimal impact on the prefecture's environment. And local people are central to the success of the corridor concept. An area with a good ecosystem normally has a poor economy. Local people inevitably use nature's resources as much as they can to improve their living conditions, which in turn can damage natural resources and biodiversity. We should increase financial support for local people's basic income and encourage them to protect the ecosystem. That will substantially reduce the damage to natural resources and biodiversity. Farmers in the Mengla Shanyong corridor have been involved mostly in rubber plantations. They'd become increasingly dependent on this one commodity, creating high levels of economic vulnerability. In the Mango Nabane corridor, farmers have predominantly been involved in tea and sugarcane production. But in both areas, this has led to increased competition over natural resources. In recent years, the price of rubber dropped significantly. Local people can't receive the expected benefits as they had before for massive plantations. So now they want to try different ways to make up for the loss of income and plant other crops to get more benefits. Rubber was not the only cash crop to see a dramatic fall in commodity price. I plant sugarcane because other agricultural industries in Mengai all went bankrupt, like the flax factory, the cassava factory and purple yam. Sugarcane plantations are not profitable if they are small. I've planted sugarcane since the 1980s. I just followed my father. It's hard work, but I have parents and children at home that need to be cared for. Exploring more diverse farming opportunities was seen as not only beneficial to livelihood security, but also to protect the area's biodiversity. These and other activities, such as an artificial wetland for wastewater treatment, a rubbish collection and disposal system, and energy-efficient technologies, are being piloted in Mangjing village in the Mango Nabane corridor. <laughs> Here is our eco tea garden. We've planted big trees here, so our tea sales fetch a good price. There are also new planted pine trees here. The entire mountain is covered by trees now. Most valuable timbers are endangered or rare species, which existed only in the original forest. If these trees are planted in rubber forests together with other crops, then a multi-layered mixed community will replace the monoculture of rubber. The biodiversity will increase greatly and environmental damage will be less. One of the main livelihood initiatives has been the establishment of a village development fund. The Village Development Fund from the project provides support for local villagers when they are short of money for living and for livelihood development initiatives. 
In running a VDF in a village, a management group is elected, and management rules are established according to specific needs. Each family pays 50 yuan as their own contribution to the VDF. 0.5% interest is charged for lending money to villagers. Local people feel that the VDF is very helpful. There are so many big differences in our village from before and after the project. Firstly, our village environment has greatly improved. And secondly, our people benefited a lot from the village development fund. It facilitated living improvements and livelihood development. The Eco Tea Garden reconstruction restored our tea garden. They organized different trainings on labor skills and economic development initiatives. The implementation of the Biodiversity Conservation Corridor project increased the awareness on and the importance of the Biodiversity Conservation Corridors and Sustainable Livelihood Development. Both government staff and local communities now have a better understanding and a greater acceptance for the concept and the technical principles introduced by the project. Some of Shishuanbana's nature reserves adjoin extensive forested areas of Lao PDR and Myanmar. YEPD, with CEP support, has already been collaborating with environment officials in those two countries to promote biodiversity conservation in transboundary areas. The border area linking Laos and China has the richest biodiversity in Shishuanbana. For example, the Shangyong Reserve and the Mengla Reserve, which both neighbor Laos, inhabitants of the Sino-Lao border area have a similar culture and living habits, which means mostly slash-and-burn farming is inevitable for a long time. Moreover, hunting is an old and popular activity in the area because of the abundance of wild animals, such as the Asian elephant, Gao, Indo-Chinese tigers, which are all protected animals. Since 2009, a joint protected area totaling 50,000 hectares was established between the Zizhuanbana Nature Reserve Management Bureau and the Langnatam Reserve Bureau. We conducted many activities in this joint protection area. New opportunities for transboundary environmental cooperation could emerge as China embarks upon its One Belt, One Road strategy which aims to promote development and economic integration along the ancient Silk Road. The CEP project has introduced international best biodiversity conservation concepts and experiences to Yunnan. These experiences could help the One Belt, One Road strategy achieve its ecological sustainability aims. In Sichuanbana Prefecture, there have been recent gains in the effort to protect its exceptional biodiversity. But there's still much to accomplish to sustain this success and to keep pace with ever-expanding human developments and needs. General Secretary Xi Jinping said nature is the true treasure. This is the truth.